Today I'm here to speak to you about blockchain. When I think about blockchain, what I want you to think about blockchain is think of it as something that cannot be changed. So for me to be able to give you a deeper explanation, I'm going to have to take applications that the blockchain technology has been applied to so that we can all understand what it's about. The most common one is Bitcoin. Mind you, Bitcoin is not blockchain. Bitcoin is the technology that was built into the finance industry using blockchain technology. So if I want to take an example of payments, I have a bank account and I want to be able to send money to you. So what would happen is I tell my bank that I want to send money to so-and-so. And when you receive an SMS, that's when you know that the money came to you. But both of us did not physically see this money. We just trusted that the bank would do this. And that is what banks, stores, and companies do. They play, they play a very vital role in effecting trust between two different parties. And then sometime in 2008, a person or a group of persons named Satoshi Nakamoto thought to themselves, why don't we decentralize this power from the banks and give it to everyone else? What if when I pay you, everyone knows that I paid you, and then they update their records at the same time? In that way, we can then decentralize trust from just one person onto the next. So I hope that you've all understood this because we'll need to go a step further. So when we go one step up, think of the blockchain as a network of connected computers around the world. Miners are using blockchain to mine information and verify this information. So they compete to verify this information. So that means that even if a bad actor wanted to come and maybe steal or hack, they wouldn't be able to because all the records are distributed across the entire network. So we're talking about millions of records. So they wouldn't be able to hack when it's a one-to-one -one relationship between me and you that they can do. But when it's now many-to-many, -many, it's very, very difficult. So the aim of the blockchain network is to be able to verify trust between all parties. As you know, the 2008 financial crisis led to a global international meltdown. And that is when we realized that we really could not trust the banks because banks are still made up of individuals, right? But what we can trust are ourselves. And when people are enabled to be able to trust each other by giving them an opportunity to work for that, then people can be rewarded for the good actions that they do. So when I think about what we could do for Africa, and where we are right now. I think in Africa, we are still getting our payments from banks and mobile money operators. These are still third party intermediators between yourself and your friend. But what if we all imagined a new reality for Africa? To be honest, it's already upon us. I think today is about echoing that clarion call for what could we do when we gave the power back to each other. So I'd like to echo Agenda 2063 by the African Union and where they said present generations are confident that the destiny of Africa is in their hands and that they must act now to shape the future that they want. The Africa that we want right now, the Africa that we want to see five years and ten years away from here is the Africa that we have to create today. And I think that if we use blockchain technology for good, we can be able to achieve great things. So the first thing that I feel you can apply blockchain technology to is ensuring that quality education is an important factor that no one has to worry about. How do we do this? By fixing our fake degree problem. How many stories have you read of the doctor who was not really a doctor, but they managed to get a certificate that said that they were a doctor? So that means that inconsistencies rise up after you've already hired the person and then complained are the ones that now bring this uh, to your attention. There are startups in Estonia like Disciplina, and Disciplina, and Disciplina is a project that is creating the world's first universal blockchain of storing your personal achievements in a permanent way that is credible. So once you load your certificates to their blockchain network, 
you are able to share this when you are looking for a job or even when you want to show people your qualifications. It's no longer a matter of you're going to go and get it certified at the police station because you'd still be able to certify a fake as well. So what is done, what the subpoena has done is that they're an open source project, which means that if you're at the University of Ghana, for example, and you want to start your own project of certifying student certificates, all you have to do is contact them, let them know of the educational project that you want to do. So if you're a tech entrepreneur here and you're inspired and you do this, I want my 5%. Please. <laughs> so send your email to office at disciplina.io. The next point that I would like to talk about is music. This relates to the ownership of a digital asset. I think the internet has been really great in giving us all access to the music that we want to and when we want it. But then this hasn't always been such a great deal for the artist and the creator because even if they get a million streams a month, do you know that they can get paid as little as $36? So that means that a lot of people get some of their money before some of that flows down to them. But if they were able to register their tracks on the blockchain network, they are able to track and record and log where their music is played. So whether it's in a coffee shop, whether you're playing it on your iPad, this would ensure that they are able to collect royalties for their music. Royalties uh, what we call the pension for artists. I recently met one of Ghana's most prolific music producers, that is Ever Grace the Game. When he was younger, he met a friend, and together they decided to form a production unit that they called The Last Two. And together they produced one of the greatest hip life albums to ever come out of Ghana, and this album is called Kaimuka. They were young, they were hungry, and they were passionate about their craft. But if I can tell you today, they have never received royalties for that album. The name of this producer is Hammer. I'm sure mo most of you are familiar with him. Today, he spends a lot of time in his studio still, but then he's also focused on growing his bakery startup, A1 Bread, which is a division of the Kumasi born A1 Bread. He makes more money today than he did when he was in the industry. Something is fundamentally wrong here. Something is truly, truly broken. The people that give us hope, provide background music to the most beautiful moments on our lives, are working in a broken system. This means that from the rubble, they give us all hope, they inspire emotion, they inspire love, they move movements, but they don't get to eat the fruits of the hard work. Do you see how big this problem is? We can fix this by using blockchain technology because blockchain provides the transparency, the accountability, and then you're able to get not just royalties, but smart contracts that enable them to be paid as soon as you hear their music. But who would this hurt? I'll tell you who this would hurt. Those are the people that work in the darkness. Those people who do not value transparency. And as you can see here, these are people as well. We engage in piracy as well. I think that it's about time that we start paying artists what they are worth. And blockchain would just be a way that would not force the process, but it would enable the process to happen in a much smoother way than the way that it currently happens right now. The next point is natural resources. If you watched um, Blood Diamond, a 2007 movie that featured Jimon Hsu and Leonardo DiCaprio, where they were both Oscar nominated, you remember that pink stone, the diamond that he found. That pink stone, while it was in his pocket, was a stone without a name. That stone changed and ended so many lives. In 2006, the largest diamond deposits to be found in an entire generation were found in Marange, Zimbabwe. Those diamonds represented a light out of the tunnel. They represented an opportunity for the Zimbabwean economy to turn around. But if I can tell you the amount of money that was lost to smuggling those diamonds, it's simply shocking. Today, that era is simply referred to as 15 billion US dollars because it could be more. You just don't know. When you think about it, if we had been able to log and track every diamond that we sold, on the blockchain network. I don't know where we'll be right now. 
I think that maybe when Black Panther was looking for scenes to film in, they would have come to shoot in our city because we could have been Wakanda, but we were not. We were not. We were not. And that transparency and accountability that the blockchain network is built to support is exactly what we need to be able to drive economies forward. The De Beers Diamond Group in South Africa is currently building such a system. And so far, by May of this year, they've managed to track about 100 high-value diamonds. So from source to cutter to polisher, right down to the person who is buying the diamond, People want to do ethical and sustainable things that help the environment. So when I think about it, if you're a diamond company in Africa, especially in Zimbabwe, if you need to become part of this project, that is the fastest way for you to get your diamonds certified by the Kimberley process. The Kimberley process is an um, initiative that was signed by nations which enable them to sell their diamonds so that they ensure that their diamonds are not coming from conflict areas and also that they are coming from legitimate sales activity as well. So if you get your diamonds on the De Beers blockchain network, how are you going to be smuggling stuff? I don't see that happening. So for me, this is why blockchain represents an opportunity for a complete turnaround. Because it's not just moving from corruption. It's moving to a completely different mindset. Because if you know that at every point, you, are, you cannot cheat and gain the system, would you even try Agriculture. Agriculture feeds us, feeds us all, but then it's also one of the most highly fragmented ecosystems that are out there due to the high number of stakeholders that are in the system. Trigger Foods in Kenya is a company that uses blockchain technology to be able to connect at least two parts of this value chain, and these are the traders and the farmers. They buy fresh produce from the farmers, which they then sell to the traders. Now, if I can tell you that Kenya's informal economy is worth 20 billion US dollars, and these traders are the ones that make up this economy. So what Twigger Foods has managed to do is that when the traders book for fresh produce, and then at some point, I think you realize my business is doing well, I need to scale my business. So these traders would then ask for extra funds, and these extra funds are the ones that they log and then they take control of their repayment habits, seeing how they pay back their money. So they're now establishing a record of their credit worthiness. They are thus bringing Kenya's informal economy into the mainstream 21st century, something that banks have not been able to do for a very long time. I don't know if you can see the potential, not just for economic transformation, but to drive people to want better for themselves, to want to do better for themselves. And this is why I'm in love with blockchain technology for Africa. Although blockchain has been said, you know, it's a wonderful project, I do have to talk about the other side as well. One of the things that people still shy away from engaging with blockchain is because it's also quite difficult to understand. Even for me to be standing here in front of you and talking to you about this, I read a lot. I didn't want to. <laughs> I didn't want to come and feed you the wrong information. So that fear is the one that stops people from engaging with the project. But I can assure you that as it is becoming more mainstream, there are lots and lots more sites that do this work of trying to make sure that it's more and more easier to understand. And if you ever do need to find more information on those resources, you can reach out to me and I'll be happy to help you get to them. The other reason is that the strength of the blockchain network actually lies in its size. So the bigger it gets, the more secure it becomes. What needs to happen in Africa is that we need to jump on more blockchain-based projects that do us good, especially for our communities. When we integrate blockchain into our system, we're able to ensure accountability, we're able to guarantee transparency, we're able to pay artists what they are worth, we're able to register our lands in a secure manner. We can ensure that the education that you get, no one is doubting that the degree that you have is truly yours. And so I feel that right now we're at an opportune moment where we could decide to leapfrog years of industrialization that other economies have already gone through and simply jump into this 21st century by using blockchain. Because now we don't have the borders that were set up before 
we have the digital accuracy, we have the digital minds. Please believe that the fact that Google would actually come to set up their AI machine lab here in Accra, Ghana, is not just because Accra has beautiful beaches or that you've got great, amazing food and welcoming people. It's because they realize that Africa is the next and actually the last frontier for technology and innovation. So Chale, if you do not upskill yourself digitally in the next five years, you're going out. So you need to upskill yourself. It's not even about doing AI or blockchain. It's just about the current job that I do now. How can I do this work faster and smarter? Lastly, I would just like to reiterate this African proverb. You know what they say. If you want to go fast, go by yourself. But if you want to go far, go together. In Africa, I believe that there's still so much more that we can do together. There are still so many ideas that we haven't thought about that we can improve upon. There are so many things that a lot of people are doing out there and they are looking for people like yourself who want to help. I want to believe that the fact that you woke up to be here today means that you care. The fact that you're watching this TEDx talk today, it means that you care. So if you are a change maker, I want to ask you this. What are you going to build for Mother Africa that is going to change your world? Think about it and let me know. Thank you so much.